Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for joining us for our 22nd Happiness Happens Month and being interviewed. I know it's, it's kind of making me feel old. <laughs> so maybe I do need that. I may need that crepe erase to, to help with that. <laughs> this is my, uh, my, 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 my age clock. Um, anyway, so Kim, this is the first time we met because we met through a mutual, a mutual friend. And so again, thank you for, for being here. So our mutual friend, Elizabeth, who was also interviewed for, for our Happiness Happens Month series, uh, said that you would be a great person to talk about being proud. And when I read your bio, you have so many accomplishments to be proud of, including being um, associated with the Miss America pageant and being a former Miss West Virginia, and I don't know what year that was, but former Miss West Virginia, all the way to you've got kids who are doing great things and you had your own clothing line, you're an entrepreneur, just, wow, I just don't know how you, you slept. I think you slept none. <laughs> so anyway, I would love for you to share a story about being proud and happy. Yeah, you know, you bring up all of the different accomplishments. And I think in life, you know, we, I'm very driven. So I'm very accomplishment oriented. I wake up with a goal in mind and I spring out of bed and I'm super excited to be able to achieve it. And sometimes I think in life, we forget to even just celebrate our successes and have those proud moments with who we are on the inside. And I've, um, I've been a little contagious when it comes to accomplishments with my kids. Like you said, I ran the teen division for Miss America for 10 years, and I've been very active in my community and trying just to make a difference, you know, make a, take up positive space on this planet, as I like to say. And throughout that process, my kids also developed that uh, save the world syndrome. And they came to me, my son was 10 and he had just ran a little book drive in his school. And he said, I want to, I want to run a book drive. I want to do more. At the same time, a book company was going in across the way from my office when I was running the teen division for Miss America. So I had a conversation with the man and he said, yeah, we can give you, you know, a few thousand books. So we thought that was kind of fun as a way that my son could start his own brand building at the time and see what he could accomplish. His main goal was something very small. He wanted to get books in the hands of kids in need because he had just learned that kids in his area didn't own books. And that was such a precious, you know, just a small concept, a small goal. And then he, he set some more goals and he wanted to collect 25,000 books and then 100,000 books. And I mean, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, my like, gosh, those are big goals. Where are we going to put 100,000 books? How do we get rid of 100,000 books? That's a lot of boxes to put 100,000 books in. So I had to like just calm my, my adult mind down. The panic attacks, I think sometimes that we have as adults where we say it can't happen. We don't have the money. I don't have the time that's going to break my back. All of that had to go out the window. And I just had and, to listen. Yeah, and I, like your garage. <laughs> and rent a storage unit. I just had to listen to his ideas. And my, my son's project has now turned into their own nonprofit. They have collected over 175,000 books. They focus on books with diversity and dual language books because in our county, the majority of the kids they were meeting um, were minorities and they wanted to make sure that the books that they had in their hands, that they were reading, they, they could relate to. So they would love reading even more. They raised over $100,000 to purchase books or to help environmental causes. And they just, the ideas just keep you know, mounting. And sometimes I, I'm proud and sometimes I just have to sit them down and say, how do you feel about this? Are you overwhelmed? Do you feel good? Can we take a moment and just celebrate this success before we start running towards the next goal? And I think in life, that's what we all need to do. It's it, whether it's just the success, a small success of, you know, for instance, my son's first book collection of 25 books, that was a huge success. But uh, if we can celebrate those small successes every single day, they mount up to big changes in our lives. Yeah. And, it, and that ultimately can help us be proud in, in yeah. so many ways. And wasn't one of your sons on Drew, the Drew Barrymore show, was that in reference to his nonprofit or yes. accomplishment? 
Yeah, now, oh, so I have I have two sons. One of them's super quiet and calm, cool, and collected and overthinks before he speaks. And then I have the live wire. <laughs> and so he will, he's a straight shooter, a typical salesman, and he'll pretty much say anything. So um, he was the one that was on the Drew Barrymore show. And mom got drug into that one. So here I was sitting next to him. And um, she gave him, you know, the couple questions she was going to ask. Well, Drew is like so earthy and just down, just wonderful and warm and a great interviewer. So she was kind of going off on some different tangents. And I thought, oh my goodness, what is Zachary going to say next? But in the end, um, she actually donated $5,000 to their cause. And he, he is still super proud of it. He brought it up today when he saw my screensaver as him and I, uh, he and I on the Drew Barrymore show. And he's like, I met her twice because she liked his interview so much. She had him back on. So that is a huge, <laughs> proud moment in our household. I was nervous, but he did great. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure it sounds like he's inherited a lot of your qualities. So Speaking of, like I said, you've done a lot to mentor other kids through the Miss America uh, ex team experience. You've obviously been a huge influence on your own kids. So you want to share a little like the I did you say their nonprofit name or, you know, share a little bit about some of some of the fun things that you're you're working on for yourself yeah. and the world. Well, my kids' nonprofit is called Eco Brothers, and it is a registered 501c3. C3, and um, I really help them just build that kind of brand building skills. That I'm an entrepreneur, and they're little, little budding kidpreneurs. So that's been such a, an accomplishment that I'm very, very proud of. As I mentioned previously, you, you mentioned I was Miss West Virginia. It's it was actually 1992, but if you want to say 2002, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Throughout the course of the Miss America organization, I felt it was really important that I give back to an organization that gave to me so much uh, accomplishments in my life. And I ran their teen program for 10 years. Now I, you can check it out on my website, kimparish.tv. I do uh, media coaching. I do um, social impact coaching to help kids be able to develop their own social impact causes, their own volunteer community service projects. I do um, it. Uh, coaching on even getting scholarships. My um, son has received over $28,000 in college scholarships. And there's a lot of college scholarships out there that are for kids involved in community service. So all of these young women that are involved in the Miss America organization, it's not just about, you know, getting the crown or riding in the parade. It's literally, in my opinion, and it should be about um, making an impact in their own communities, about making positive changes in their life, being a great public speaker and a great role model for others. And of course, you know, giving back and helping others achieve their goals. And that's what I do, so. Oh, that's awesome. And people can also see you on, you know, helping us look younger, right? Yes, on QVC. So I spent 10 years as a host on QVC and decided it was time for me to go out and develop my own pro project. So I designed and developed a clothing collection, which I sold internationally all around the world. And then at one point, the clothing collection was getting smaller. I was getting ready to adopt Zachary. So I took myself off TV and I said, I don't care if I ever go back on TV again. I was running the teen division of Miss America at the time. I said, it's going to have to be the perfect time to get me back on TV. It needs to be skincare because I'm getting older. It has to be QVC. And if I'm going to work with a company, I want to work with Guthy Ranker. Uh, about six months later, my agent called me up and she says, Kim, you're not going to believe this. Guthy Ranker wants you for an infomercial for skincare with James Seymour. And they want you to take it to QVC. And I thought, you know, that universe listens when you speak, right? <laughs> so I was so happy. And I've been with Craper Race now for eight years. It's anti-aging skincare for the body, but we also have skincare for the face too. And it is revolutionary. Uh, I, yeah, I love that because because skin carries happiness. So <laughs> yeah, looking yeah. good, feeling good, you know, it all works together. <laughs> well, yeah, like the, yeah, it, it does for some because happiness is personal. Some people are a little yep. bohemian and, and that might not be their thing. But for those of us who aren't, those of us who... I was talking to somebody that, that as we move into the next one, it's your happiness is personal. And she's like, well, I have two. And she shared one, I forgot what it was, but the second one was about clothes. She's like, I converted a whole bedroom into a closet because my clothes make me feel good. And I'm like, love that. Love that. Cause you know, and again, for somebody else, they might want 10 pieces and that's it. And yeah, that's, I have that's a fantasy. Over. Like, I want to be a minimalist so bad. Like, I, I read blogs on it. I fantasize about it. I, I want to be a minimalist. I just can't get past the hurdle of continually buying new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> 
because because for some of us our clothes you know we're, we're kind of like coco chanel the clothes are an expression of where we are any moment so which gets us to our final question which is um in my book practical happiness happiness is personal that's the first principle because um, we live in this world of a lot of group think, which is, is great on some fronts, but on some other fronts, it's not because we may think, well, if we want ketchup on our eggs and the rest of our family doesn't like that, we may think that shouldn't make us happy when in fact, it, it's, it's our happiness is personal. Mm -hmm. So what is one of your happiness is personal? So it might not be, you know, your friends, your kids, your family, anybody else's, but it's just kind of yours that. And it might be close. Um, it's just kind of yours that you're like, yeah, but I'm doing this. It's really a super happiness is personal for me. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm a Virgo and I'm just like a crazy researcher. So in the five love languages, I'm all about quality time. So for me, I like to plan trips. And even if I don't take them, I take a mental vacation and I will surf the best hotels and plan the outings. And by the time I get to the point of even booking it, I've already been mentally on that vacation. I don't even have to go, but I love to explore new places. So I do like to travel a lot, but even if I'm not traveling, like I could just spend a few hours on the internet just researching a place and feel like I've escaped. Oh, I love that because actually yeah. research shows that planning a vacation makes us almost as happy as actually taking it. Okay. And you think about how much money I'm saving. <laughs> exactly. You're saving money and you can be happy. So yeah, one of the things I'm always telling people to do is, you know, plan your dream vacation because A, the universe does hear us, but also B, just that whole planning research phase of the vacation can can really make us feel really really great and 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 happy and i always define happiness is when we feel a little bit better than we did the moment before you know when we feel good and sometimes that's just a little bit better than the moment before it might not be cartwheel you know fun type happiness but it can just be whatever whatever that is so vacations are great so thank you for that's sharing awesome. that and thanks for joining me and i yeah. so appreciate you being here for happiness happens month I was so happy when I got your email. So thank you for having me on.